you believe we are actually flying on a plane to a ship? It's hard to believe the USS Theodore Roosevelt is 80 miles off the coast of Virginia. Can't wait. It's going to be some landing. Can you believe that we landed on an aircraft carrier while it was moving? I'm not sure it's so awesome. My legs still won't stop shaking. <laughs> Look at the size of this ship. I know, it's huge. Yeah, but the runway's so short. I know. Hi, welcome aboard USS Theodore Roosevelt. I'm Lieutenant John Oliveira, your escort officer. You guys must be the treehouse detectives that I've heard so much about. Yes, sir, we are the treehouse detectives. All oh, right. We've never seen such a big ship before. Well, Theodore Roosevelt is a big ship. Home to 5,000 sailors, it weighs 97,000 tons, and if you put it on its end, it'd be as tall as the Empire State Building. And in fact, it has everything we need on board. Everything? Everything. Gyms, hospital, we even have a dentist. And Gidong. What is Gidong? Gidong snack food. All right, I could live here. What is this area called? This is the flight deck, and it's four and a half acres. This is where we launch the 71 airplanes we carry. You can launch airplanes off this small runway? He means we're going to be launched off this runway. We can launch them pretty quick. We use that to help with some catapults. That's how we do it. What are catapults? Well, catapults are what we use to help launch our airplanes. But let's go down to V2 Division, talk to Senior Chief Spinner, and he can explain that to us in a little bit more detail. Hello, Senior Chief Spinner. We need to learn more about the force of thrust. Can you tell us about your catapults and how they create thrust? Well, yes, I can. The catapult is actually two sets of cylinders that run 300 feet long. And within each cylinder is a piston. And it connected to the piston assembly is a shuttle that extends above the level of the flight deck. Not a space shuttle. No, the shuttle is actually a metal object that connects to the aircraft that we use when, when we're launching airplanes on the flight deck. The shuttle can actually take an airplane from zero to over 160 miles an hour in about two seconds. Now that's fast. And a lot of thrust. But what makes the shuttle go so fast? When we want to fire the catapult, steam actually enters the power cylinders and it pushes the piston semi and shuttle and the aircraft to the opposite end of the catapult at a very high rate of speed. Steam is really powerful stuff. But where does steam come from on a ship? Well, on a carrier, the steam comes from the ship's power plant. Now, our power plant consists of two nuclear reactors. Nuclear reactors? Wow, they must create major power. ...on the deck, so we contacted a real F-14 pilot. Uh, it's like a violent, uh, somewhat violent roller coaster ride. You get thrown back in your seat, and in about two seconds you're uh, going from zero to 150 miles. Bye, thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Enjoy your cat shot. That's really weird. It couldn't be him. What? I think I just shot some video of Dr. D. Look over there. Call him. Dr. Dr. D. Huh? What are you guys doing here? Well, what are you doing here? Just doing a little research. So are we on thrust. What have you learned? We learned today that the plane has to be going about 160 miles per hour to get lift, and the catapults help the plane go that fast very quickly because of the short runway. Dr. D, how does this compare to a regular airport runway? An airport runway is 10,000 feet long, but a carrier's catapult runway is only 300 feet long. That means the ratio of the airport runway to the catapult runway would be 10,000 to 300. If you do the math and divide the airport runway length by the catapult runway length, you will find that the airport runway is about 33 times longer than the runway. On a carrier, the catapult provides immediate thrust for the plane to take off that quickly. Isaac Newton's laws of motion tell us that if you want to speed an object up, you have to apply force to it. That makes sense. I have to push really hard on the pedals of my bicycle to make it go faster, quicker. Very good. What would happen if you were pulling a wagon with your kid sister in it? That would be a lot harder. 
Isaac Newton also told us it takes more force if you want to speed up more mass. In math, that's called a direct variation. Wow, math is everywhere. Oh, so that means if the plane is bigger, or has more fuel or more cargo, it needs greater thrust to make it to its takeoff speed by the end of the runway. Watch this. Wow, your plane really spun. I don't think we want our plane to do that. That's called roll. What many planes do to avoid roll is to have what's called dihedral angle. That means having the wings tipped up like this in a V. That made a big difference. Looks like a plane's ready to take off. I can't wait to try the catapult. It's going to be so awesome. Let's go. Hold on. 